Namo tassa pakawato arahato sama sampu tassa. Namo tassa pakawato arahato sama sampu tassa. Namo tassa pakawato arahato sama sampu tassa. Uttang damang sankang namasami. Hello again, belated Vesak wishes to everyone. Um, we just had the full moon of Vesak. We usually have a fair number of people that come for Vesak, but we were, because of the COVID, what we were a dozen, you think? A dozen people, but very quality people. <laughs> and then other people came through and brought flowers and food through the day. So it was a very lovely, lovely day. I hope yours, uh, I, I know most of us are used to going temples and places for uh, Vesak and those celebrations are, are very special for the heart because uh, we come together as a, commun a community of, 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 of common, common effort and common value and, and, and common inspiration. And these are obviously very important things because uh, they say in, in places like Ontario, uh, being a Buddhist monk is an exotic thing, to say the least. And uh, when we can come together as more people, it's, a, it's, a, it's very enriching. So hopefully next year, next year in Tisarana or something like that. <clears throat> um, here at Tisarana, it's, it's fabulous. Uh, <laughs> as it's like I was saying to someone, it's same old, same old, another day in paradise. <laughs> it's just it's so it's so really really beautiful and now the uh, mammals are starting to give birth to their young so Niroso saw two baby groundhogs I think and I saw my first fawn so the deer are giving birth and the fawn was uh, she was barely walking barely walking yeah, it was really really lovely and the birds are multiplying so it's it's very very alive and and the mosquitoes are very alive too, so it's not all perfect. But we're, we're doing well. Um, I thought I'd talk about Buddhism today, <laughs> but um, the, I've been thinking recently that, that um, one could look at, at Buddhism as two, it's two kinds of endeavors or maybe two kinds of projects. And the way I've been sort of mulling it over is one is the kind of bodhisattva project and the other is the arahant project and the arahant project for me is is the is the yearning to come home and like Ajahn Chah's way of, of, of talking about our real home and I think we all have that yearning to come home and in whatever spiritual way we we speak of that to come to a place which is free from suffering and free from all the anxieties of inner turmoil and, and so to me, I, I call that the Arahant Project. Um, and the other, the Bodhisattva Project, is, is, more, is more like, I also yearn for the well-being of others. I really do. And, and uh, so when I see the pictures coming out of India or Nepal or other places, that we're having a lot of um, profound, tragic situation, I, yearn, I really feel, feel that very strong that we all do. And I want to do something, and there's, uh, there's limited things I can do. I can do a few things, um, and that's the sort of bodhisattva project, that yearning for the goodness of others and the living of one's life uh, for that, with that in mind. Um, I, I enjoy reading the lives of enlightened beings or the, the statements of enlightenment. It's one of my hobbies. For some reason, because uh, it, I think many of you have read Long Paul Liam's um, Enlightenment piece from what's the book? No worries. No worries. That's 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 such an inspiring piece, and and just to kind of get the um, the sense of what an enlightened being might might feel, rather than just the the doctrinal lists that we have, you get rid of this one, you get rid of that one, you get rid of that one, and point. I mean, what does it feel like? That's what I'm curious about. And so when Lopoliam describes 
is enlightenment or this is a teacher from India. Uh, his name is Srinasargadatta. And this is his statement of awakening. The main change was in the mind. It became motionless and silent, responding quickly, but not perpetuating the response. Spontaneity became a way of life. The real became natural and the natural became real. And above all, infinite affection, love, dark and quiet, radiating in all directions, embracing all, making all interesting and beautiful, significant and auspicious. Oh, that's so good, isn't it? <laughs> that is just so wonderful to read that. And any, like being with Ajahn Chah, sitting around his kuti, um, you, you would just sit in, in, his, in his radiance. He wasn't doing anything, he was just sitting there. And I think a lot of us in those early days, we'd be struggling with our meditation at our kutis, falling asleep or getting angry at the mosquitoes or something significant like that. And then we just head all, all over to Lompos Kuti and, and uh, sit down on the, on the, on, on the, on the, under his Kuti and he'd be receiving guests or he'd be there quietly and all of a sudden everything would be okay. It was all right because he was home. And, and, and it was very interesting that. And yeah, then you'd kind of be there for a while and then, okay, and back to my own mind <laughs> and the difficulties of my own mind. So, so that, that kind of love, uh, love, I was talking to Nirasa about that, the, the, the kind of difficulty of the word love in English, because it can mean I, you know, I, uh, I love fish and chips and uh, I, uh, I love my master and I'd love to give that person a piece of my mind and passionate love. So it's a, it's a difficult word. And yet, and yet, like we use the words of the Brahma Viharas, metta, uh, karuna, mudito, peka. And yet, I, I've not grown up with the word metta. You know, I've I've used it for forty five years, but it doesn't have the emotional impact of of the word love. And I imagine a Thai person who's actually grown up with that word, it would be a much more significant word. And in a language, is like that. It has its um. It, it, like if I just remember Lompo Sumedha, that's just a word, but it has it has a resonance. It has a resonance and a feeling and a perception in it. So, so the the word love is maybe maybe too broad, but there it is. Um, so whether it's the Arahant project, um, and and we and we witness someone who is so profoundly awakened. And and we're in their ambience, or whether it's the Bodhisattva project where we, you know, we, we don't want beings to suffer. We feel that both to me, it seems, are are are, are aspects of love. Um, love must be a part of it in, in, in some way. And and so how could we come to those doorways of love more and more and and, and abide in those doorways of love? Uh, in, in a more constant way, because we tend to abide in the doorways of thought and, and analysis and, and um, thinking and planning and, and, and so on. So I think, yeah, you, you, yeah, Brian was telling me, I'll change the name now, so you won't be twice. <laughs> was saying when the, when, the, when the Thai people, we met the Thai people and they said, I think they were talking about where's the mind? And the Thai people pointed to their heart. And I think Westerners, we tend to, the mind's up here. Not different, different. But whatever it is, we do have a, a powerful um, center, uh, which, is, uh, which is, I think, love and compassion at the center of the chest. And, and I think we've all felt that. I hope so. <laughs> I'd be worried if we haven't. Um, so I was out in the, in the, in the forest going to, I give you a third name now for you, going to a friend's uh, <laughs> And uh, I, I came around the corner and there was a, 
a deer with its fawn. And the fawn was probably just born a few hours before, just still wobbly on its legs and taking milk from its mother. And I kind of surprised them. And, and the mother held her ground. I didn't get close. And she stomped her feet, like all mothers should do. And uh, uh, I, I didn't want to bother. I just watched. And, and it was so heartfelt. It was so very heartfelt. And, and, that, and to me, that's like the doorway to love, isn't it? That you see something and, 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 and you understand it. Because I'm a mammal and I've had a mom. <laughs> and uh, I can, like, there's so much that goes on in that perception. I know that there are lots of coyotes in our woods. The little fellow uh, is vulnerable and mom's protecting it. You know, so there's, there's so much um, in that, in that perception. Now, you might say I'm just a sentimental old man, you know, but, but to me, sentiment is in thought, whereas, whereas that genuine feeling that arose in that situation was not in thought, it was here. The mind was very silent. We have those doorways, and there's important doorways. I was, yeah, just like you might be observing a friend, and you realize they're, they're kind of going through something really, really difficult, and you, and you look at them, and you realize, yeah, that person's going through a lot of difficulty. You understand. You understand them, not through thought, but you, you know where they're at and, and your heart feels it, doesn't it? And that's love. It? Or, or, or you, you see someone who's really worked hard and had a, you know, something's come out well because they've worked hard at it and diligently and they're really happy with that. And you look at them and you're with them and, you, and say, yeah, that's nice. And that's love, isn't it? So, so love as, as, as the Brahma Viharas are, are these, these various ways that through, Metta, loving kindness, karuna, compassion, mudita, joy, will pick up peace. Um, uh, there's various, both doorways and expressions of love in, 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 in the human heart. And, and it seems to me that, that cultivating, remembering those maybe, cultivations, sounds like manufacturing, remembering those, both the doorways, and, and sustaining our, 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 our presence in the doorways rather than always going to thought. So, for instance, uh, with, with this beautiful little vignette with the, with the deer and, and, and the fawn, um, so the heart was really, really uh, open. Not that it was closed two minutes before that, but, but that really emphasized it. Uh, and then I just just stayed there, and I... And I, I I didn't go anywhere, but then I then I looked at a rock from here, from the heart. I looked at a tree from the heart. Now, now what what? <laughs> I mean, this sounds a bit woo woo, but, be, but you know, bear with me. <laughs> um, like like, let's say you you see that 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 situation with the deer and the fawn. What usually happens? Oh, it's wonderful. Wasn't it beautiful? It was just so, and I'm going to tell my brother and I oh, well, don't get an iPhone. Where's my iPhone? Take a picture. And you've lost it. You're not in the heart. You're in your Facebook page or <laughs> whatever you want to go, but you've lost it. You haven't stayed, you know, haven't stayed with the heart. I've gone to thought. I've gone to calculation. I've gone to whatever. I've gone to excitement, maybe. Simply, simply. Oh, oh look, 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 look. To actually stay in the heart is, is a silent, part of the silent endeavor. You know, and, and like Nisargadatta is saying, deeply, deeply silent and loving. So when, when those heart openings take place, I, I think a very, profound thing to do is to start to stay there all the time and, and, and interpret or meet life through this, through this, through the heart. So when I say you look at a rock from the heart, I mean, I'm using my eyes, I know, I know. But to, 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 to what happens when you do that? What happens is just not about a person. The person it might be the door with that. What happens if you look at everything from here? Well, that requires silence. 
That requires silence. You can't do that if you're, if you're analyzing. I'm not dismissing calculative thought, analytical thought, functional thought. It's important, obviously. But usually we're pretty good at that. And sometimes we go overboard and worry and, and, and get a bit stressed out and so on. Um, but the other, the other to silently witness something from the heart is, is an interesting exercise. And, 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 and what, you, what, what you'll find, I think, is that in Ms. Argadatta's piece, then the response is very quick. Spontaneity is natural, but there is no perpetuation of the response as opposed to attachment to thought perpetuates like resentment and I wish I would have done that or even excitement. Oh, that was wonderful. And then you repeat it 20 times on your Facebook page, which is okay. And you'll, you'll get some hits, I suppose, or thumbs up or whatever they do on Facebook. But, but would not it be more interesting to stay with the heart? Would that be a more kind of uh, fruitful and, and um, interesting kind of way to approach life? Or what happens if you do that? What happens if you actually do that a lot? Then that's called meditation. And you actually, uh, in, in, in meditation, you, 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 you make conscious that feeling at the center of the chest through your relationship to your children or your, your partner or, or fellow monks. It doesn't really matter, an image. Um, I, had, I had an image of someone uh, in India. It was just a... One of those images, you, it was on BBC or something. It was just this, this elderly lady with this gas tank by her head, a mask over, and she looked so sad. Oh, it was just, just such a sad, sad picture. And it wasn't horrific, you know, it wasn't horrific, but it was sad. And I could, I could just see, yeah, my mother was old, and, and she would find it really difficult, that kind of situation. And so that sadness is actually a doorway to love, isn't it? If I think, then, oh, it's horrible, India, what are they going to do? And, and oh, when is this going to end? And how are they going to get the vaccines? That's not love, that's thought. The, the, the thinking can be good, like if you're working for um, Médecins Sans Frontières or, or, or Bill Gates and you got money, okay, then you use calculative thought to try to affect something good, obviously, and, and we contribute what we can, all of us. But what if, we, what if we like take something which is sad when we see something which is sad? Well, sadness is actually a kind of love, isn't it? It's not depression. It's just, yeah, that, that's really sad. And, and if, what if I take it here and I hold it here? Then that's, a, that's the same doorway to love that the deer is offering me. The deer is a, is a, is a, is a beautiful manifestation in nature, but it's the same doorway. Or, or, or I see, I see some, you know, something joyous like maple tree, <laughs> or, or the two, the two little gophers that are running around, the baby gophers. What if I related that way? And, and to me, this is what the practices of Brahma Viharas are about. They're, they're not simply recitations uh, that you do. I think the recitations are helpful, but they are abiding in a different place from thought. And, and, and if, if our thinking processes um, are only, only calculative and analytical and so on, I, we're missing a huge part of life. But if our, if, our, if our thinking processes can be the, can serve the heart, you know, can be in the service of the heart, then the thinking is much, much different rather than in the service of anxiety or in the service of resentment or in the service of greed. And that's where obviously uh, wrong thinking takes place because it's no longer in the service of the heart, but it's in the feeding of delusion and, and the ego thinking. And we all know that. We all know how. And that's just a, a feeding and a serving of suffering. Of suffering. So how could you then take this kind of idea, if it makes sense, <laughs> um, how could you take it to a practice? Well, then if, you, if you've actually considered that in very open-hearted situations, then when you're feeling annoyed at someone, then you could say, well, I wonder how, why can't I look at annoyance from the heart rather than from the head? If I can look at a, at a first of all, the more, most easy 
easy incidence is the, the, the deer with the fawn. And I can, I can relate, commune with that experience from the heart. And then I can play around with that. I said, what if I did that with a rock or a tree? Then I started to, to, to introduce into my way of being, my way of relating to the world, uh, a way which I'm not maybe not familiar with because I'm more familiar with an, an analysis and judgment and, and so on. So I'm not so familiar with that. So I need to kind of do that, do that in, in meditation and, and remind myself and encourage myself to do that. And if I do it a lot, then I do find that, that the, the, the attention rests here very nicely. It's very open. Uh, the throat opens, the heart opens, the belly opens, all the breathing, the chakras open. Uh, and, and, and then when something comes into consciousness, which is maybe some old historical resentment or anxiety or thing like that, then there's almost an intuitive capacity then to relate to that from the heart. And then the response is very, very quick. And, and, and the result is very quick. It's not perpetuated through thought. Where if I'm not, if I've not done that kind of exercise, then the arising of something like anxiety or, or whatever it might be, um, perpetuates in thought. How long? And we've all had that, haven't we? It just kind of goes on and on and on. And then we try to rectify it through then more thinking through self-judgment or whatever, and then we give up and go to sleep or whatever we do. But, but to, 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 not, to not think I have to do anything about it, fix it or get rid of it, but to relate to it as, as I can relate to other things in life from the heart. Now, this is not sentimental. This is very difficult. Usually cynics look at this and say it's sentimental and, and say, well, that's just kind of lovey-dovey, new age stuff, but try it. Give it a go. And you see how, how really, really difficult it is to actually stay in the heart in a sincere way, not known in sentimental way, because the ego and, 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 and the creation of self is, is, is very much thought-based, isn't it? And, and, and this isn't the kind of manufacturing either. It's like, you, 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 like when I used to do metta bhava and I tried to manufacture some really ecstatic, blissful, divine experience of love and didn't work. <laughs> um, yeah, with that, when I sat with Ajahn Chah, I was there. So it is something that's available. It's in something, but we've maybe, for some of us, I, when I went into the monastery, I hadn't massaged that part very much. I had excited that part, but I hadn't, I hadn't what? I hadn't developed it, you know, as a, as a it wasn't that I was cruel or mean, you know, I was kind and, and all of that, but it wasn't a, sort of a, a deliberate thing. Um, so, when, in that meditation, when I when I suggested um, uh, bring up bring up the name of someone, and then remember them, but remember them here. That's not so difficult, is it? I, I you know we all have someone. Hopefully, I, I tell the story of a gentleman in I think he was somewhere in northern England. He worked for the coal board for many, many, many years. And then when the coal industry collapsed or declined in, in, in England, he, he was laid off in a very cruel way. And he, you know, he, was, he was a good worker and all that. And he just felt so bitter, it's just, it's so bitter and, 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 and so much negativity. It was really hard talking with him. So I'm just trying, you know, I was kind of, okay, how can we get some meta in this, in this guy's perceptions? That's all I wanted. I didn't want him to be different. I just, you know, there are other perceptions to life than cold board resentment. And so I worked there. Uh, no, 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 no. And finally, I hit it. He worked for the RSPCA and he loved cats. So we did cats. <laughs> Not the musical, but uh, I said, just bring it to your heart, a cat, your favorite cat. And just, what does that feel like? He says, well, that's nice. And there, okay, there, there. And it was there. It, it was difficult. It was laid over with, with all kinds of, 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 of resentment, but it kind of got him going, kind of going. And, and we all have that capacity. Um, but quite often we only, we only, it seems like incidental or, 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 or what, what's the word? It's more like, 
situational, you know, so that gets, that gets, uh, Stimulated by a situation outside and having some neat experience, but actually by me remembering, and that's why it's meditative, it's contemplative. And then you bring it up and say, "Yeah, that's okay. That feels that feels wholesome. That feels like like coming home. Yeah, that feels like coming home." And it also feels like a way of relating. And so then you then you see how love is both the Arhan project and the Bodhisattva project. They're not they're not at all mutually exclusive. Not at all. And, and yeah, because it, it makes sense for me here and it makes sense for my relationship to the world. Um, so I don't know how you, you, you take these practices of the Brahma Viharas, but take, to me, they, they, they are, they're, they're so very profound, but they're not analytical, right? And so, so we get in, in Theravada Buddhism, we get a lot of analytical teaching, Paticca Samupada and and the Chitukanata and five aggregates and, and the Paramis, and, and they're all very good, but um, they, they are at the intellectual level. You have to ground them in, in, in your being. But, you know, how much intellect do you need about love? You know, like, <laughs> it's just one word. But what is it? You know, what, 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 what really is that? Or how much, how much language do we spend on compassion? We don't spend much language on it, but is, isn't it, you know, isn't it that kind of really a foundation for your real home? Because if emotionally I'm simply in the realms of greed, hatred, and delusion, that's not my real home. I'm never going to be fulfilled there. I'm never going to find a resting place there. But as soon as I come to the heart, yeah, that's restful. Yeah. And then also I relate to either the other person or my own negativity. Yeah, that's that's that that feels right, and and isn't it isn't that what we're in 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 our contemplative development of, uh, as human beings, spiritual beings? Uh, isn't it very important that we feel? Yeah, this is right. This works, and a, a self affirmation which isn't based on another teacher telling you or or an opinion. It's not an opinion. This isn't an opinion, is it? It's it's a it's a feeling of rightness. A feeling of that homeness, of, of appropriateness. And, and those are the things that really spur your practice because you want to go back to that. You want to return to that place of, of well being, of safety. You want to sit, you want to meditate. Whereas if, if, if the project is trying to become enlightened, oh, give it a, you're going to really suffer. Because <laughs> that's not your real home. Becoming isn't your real home. Your home, real home has to be here and now, doesn't it, right? And, and, and so it, it, you, you, like when I suggest, bring up a person into your heart. You're not becoming something, are you? You're remembering something, which is always there. And then there's a feeling, oh, yeah, this is home. And that's, that kind of confidence and, uh, and self-assuredness is, is, is not arrogant. You don't have to tell anyone. And, and you, don't have, you don't need a badge or a certificate, you know. You know, it works. And, and so that, I would say, is a way of right understanding. Right? It, you know, we talk a lot about samaditi, and ditti means views. So it always sounds intellectual. But when I come to the heart and it feels right, that to me is right understanding, because I know that's right, don't I? That's right. Yeah. And you can say that's wrong. You can say it's sentimental. Or you've lost the plot. You're dumb or you're an old monk. But I say, maybe. Yeah, I don't have to argue with you because I know. And that sense of knowing um, is, is significant because it keeps you going. And, and you want to you wanna research that and understand that and live with that. All right. So I'll leave that for your reflection. Thank you, Long Paul. Let's all say three sadhus together. Andamayam o wadagata sadu karan kadama se sadu 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 sadu
Okay, Peter, what's next? Lampa, would you have time for questions and answers? I'd be happy, yes. Great, thank you, Lampa. So, brothers and sisters, I'd like to welcome you to join Lampa in the questions and answers. If you have got a question, please click on the button, button and we will unmute you. We have not we have not seen Lam Paul on screen for the last three weeks. <laughs> I was in so, Toronto, in Ireland. Right, and um, well, whilst we wait for someone to ask a question, we'll just uh, ask about Lam Paul's health. Uh, Lam Paul, have you been vaccinated? I've gotten one shot, and I had no reaction, and. Uh, Brian Nirasso has had one shot, and the rest of the Richard, you haven't had. You guys haven't. So we're still waiting. The rest of the community that visitors have had, Priyani and Shanti, you've had. Canada's a bit slow with the rollout because we don't produce uh, our own vaccines. Uh, but but I was talking with Ajahn Gianta this morning, and. Um, I had, I think I mentioned this last time, but the having the shot was a beautiful experience that they've converted into a, an inoculation center. And uh, it was so loving and kind. And, and people were very, you know, they knew I was a monk and they were respectful and uh, asked questions. And uh, it was a lovely experience. I like, like we're all in this together. And, and, and um, we just have to do this, do this beautifully. And, and uh, it was really... I was quite high after that. <laughs> not from the shot. Uh, not from the <laughs> shot. So uh, we're doing, I'm doing well. The others are kind of waiting. It'll, I think soon the vaccine will be available. Maybe. Do you have a date? June 17th. June 17th for Amr Siri. Any questions then? There are no questions uh, from the floor yet, not Lampur. But I noticed that you have a new uh, background. Could you share? Yeah, we're still wor work yeah. this Buddha. We're still working on the height of the camera. We'll get it lower. This Buddha comes from Bali, and Venerable Amasiri's parents donated it. And it's which tr it is which tree? Hibiscus. It's a hibiscus tree, and it's got. It's like in the Maitreya style with one leg on a, on a, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Huge thing. We have some yes, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Buddhas. And this, this Tanka here, I will now break the computer. Da -da -da -da. That Tanka comes from Tibet. Venerable Chunda brought that one day. And it's framed by uh, someone from the National Gallery. One of the foremost sort of people in who are experts in paper they framed it for us so there you go voila it's very nice well now we have got uh, questions from the floor can i please invite karen karen please uh, unmute yourself morning long poor Good morning, Karen. Hi. Um, Long I need to check with you on a couple of things. You know how it is that in Buddhist um, um, texts, there are very loaded jargon. So you have words like wrongful, right, and rituals. I'm just wondering, could you please elaborate more on that particular loaded phrase? Because um, sometimes it's, a, it's, it's given to a lot of misunderstanding. And uh, in, in the context of our daily practice, um, sometimes I wonder, what, what does it really mean? Okay. Um, so belief in rites and rituals, you can, you can take a really broad definition, like Ajahn Sumedha's definition is, is sometimes he talks about cultural conditioning, just that. So... Um, Say, uh, if you're a woman in Malaysia or Thailand or Sri Lanka or whatever, you are 
conditioned by culture that to certain norms. And then you have to live within those norms. Now, if you live within those norms in a way which is mindful and respectful and so on, and the norms are not hurtful, then, then you can use them as a vehicle, a cultural vehicle. We need, we need some social forms that help, helps everyone live life. But if you live within those norms out of fearfulness, because that's how you've been conditioned, a good woman does this, doesn't do that, and, and you're always fearful of blame and, 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 and there's a lot of fear in it, then that would be wrongful rites and rituals. You're living culturally out of fear, and there's, there's a lot that exists that. The most common way to talk about this is superstition. So the idea that if I bow to a Buddha image, somehow I'm going to win the lottery. Okay, that's a, that's a really coarse and simplistic example, but none of us are there for that. There's a much more, much more subtle possibility. So if, if like, let's say, uh, I went to a, a funeral, where was it? I forget where it was. And it was a, a Chinese family somewhere away from their home culture and no one knew how to do the rituals. And you, you could see they were bluffing. The, you know, the rituals of, of a person that's died. And, and um, I could see that I didn't know the Chinese rituals, but if I just told them this is the way you do it, they would be very grateful. So I just said, do it like this. I said, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and, 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 and they felt really great. That's all they wanted. They didn't really care what the ritual was. And then I went to another group and they started to argue. No, 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 no. You put the head there. No, no, no. You put the feet there. No, no, no. You put the shoes there. No, 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 no. And that was all fear because they thought that if you don't do the right ritual, this person's going to go to hell and beyond. <laughs> and, and, and that's ridiculous, isn't it? So a lot, you know, when, when culture and ritual is fear-based and, and a lot of it is, then, you know, it's the fear you got to look at. And, and I've, I've, I've certainly had that as a monk, you know, the, the, like when, when we came to England from Thailand, we had been so strongly trained in the Sajjan Cha tradition that we were always anxious that we break a rule, you know, like, oh, you know, would the Thais do it that way? And we go, and say, wait, 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 we're good monks. What's the worry? And, and, and there was a kind of anxiety there uh, uh, around the rule keeping. And, and I've been a monk for a while. So, so for me, you know, or, or like say, like you have in, 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 in Sri Lanka, you have like this place called Katargama, which they took me to and broke a coconut or something. So, so you, you know, you, you go to the deity and, and you make a wish and, 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 and then if your wish comes true, and your wish is very personal, like, may I get a good job in the civil service or am I get all A's in my examinations? You're nervous, you go there and do that. And if you get an A, then you offer a coconut. If you don't get an A, you try again next time. <laughs> but, but so, so, okay, maybe that's all superstitious, but maybe if a person just does the ritual, it relieves the anxiety. Right. So even that, you can't just say, well, that's superstitious. That's stupid because you don't know the cultural conditioning of that person. So maybe for that person, they they say, I pray to the Buddha for for health. OK, do it. Right. Um, but I can't say that that's wrong. I can say, are you living from fear? Is this just a fear based thing? And and I I give I've given one example a lot that there was a woman in New Zealand. Thai woman, and you know the Thai folk like to wear medallions, Buddha medallions around their necks, and there's some exquisite ones, really, really, and there's a whole market, there's a whole market, and there's a whole um, ethos around how powerful these things are, and they're blessed by great ajans and, and saints and so on. So this, this woman, she's in New Zealand, she goes in the sea and loses her medallion, and she was petrified. She was absolutely petrified that she'd get hit by lightning or run over by a car because she had invested so much security in this thing that the result was fear. 
So the, the, the way to kind of, I think, do rituals and rites is the way of joy and celebration and gratitude. So um, like you, we have a lovely shrines and, and then we, we decorate them with flowers and then we bow silently and then we can look at a Buddha and say enlightenment, uh, Nibbana, thank you, gratitude. These are lovely ways. So sometimes people then throw out the baby with the bathwater. They say, it's all superstition. We'll just have a rock. <laughs> and we'll do Zen. Oh, come on. We have art. We have representative art. You know, we have, we have ways. We have chanting. So um, if, if it's like, like let's say, uh, I, I often, not often, but maybe once or once a year or once every other year or twice a year, I'll be asked to go to some to a hospice, uh, someone is dying and they'd be a part of our community. And I always do chanting. And, and because the person isn't really computing that well, and I'm not going to talk dependent origination <laughs> with them because <laughs> their heart doesn't need intellect, right? Their heart needs something. And we always do the chanting and it has such a profound effect. Beautiful effect. Just, it just, it just, I've come into a room when the person looks agitated. They're not fully, well, they're not talking. Their eyes are closed. They hear the chanting. Ooh, you know, really, really cool. So these, these rituals that have come down to us from Buddhist cultures are, are, are invaluable. They can be misused, right? Um, I once... Like Thailand has, has a thing about lottery numbers. They're always asking monks for lottery numbers. <laughs> so they think monks have powers. And so they'd go to Ajahn Chah and they say, Long Paul, uh, how old are you? I said, older than last year. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't give them a number. How many monks are there? Almost as many as last year. Wouldn't give them a number. So, <laughs> so once these... Two characters from Bung Wai Village came and I had been talking with someone that I had a dream of Lompo Samedo dying. It was a horrible dream. And they came up to my kuti and I wasn't very sussed with this. And they say, um, how old is Lompo? And I said the number. They ran off to get a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I learned my lesson. So it, it, you know, people who are very rational, they can say, oh, it's all, you know, it's all, 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 all rubbish. But there is a whole aspect of religious practice, which is devotional, which brings up beautiful qualities of, of gratitude and love. And these are wholesome. These are wholesome. And imagery is used in that way, uh, you know, to, to bring forth that, that feeling. So it's really about, about your mind. Well, with Westerners, we say you don't have to bow if you don't want to. We don't force it. Um, but we do try to say be respectful of a Buddha image. Um, so like I don't like, I don't like to see de decapitated Buddha heads lying around. I think it's horrible. That's not the iconography. It's just someone stole a head off a Buddha and is selling it now. And I, I think, oh, don't do that. Now, if I'm attached to that, that's superstition, Right. But I can have a sensitivity, right? I can have an aesthetic around that. I will treat it nicely, put it up high, respect it. And then that brings forth the respect from the heart, doesn't it? Okay? That gives some ideas? Karen, yeah? Enough. Okay. Um, may I please invite uh, the next person, Ting? Ting? Ting, I believe, is from China. Ting, oh. are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, Vita. I am from Singapore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe it's the name, <laughs> but it's okay. So um, thank you, Long Paul, and uh, it's lovely to meet again. Um, my question is a bit on meta, and it's a bit on two parts. Um, one of it is I recognize that uh, during Visa Day celebration, a lot of it uh, in the Mahayana tradition, we go towards uh, devotional ritual practices. Um, 
And now, increasingly, when I join online Zoom, uh, we are turning towards Meta to send to the world and those that we care for. So I am curious that um, is Meta alone as a way of a daily practice helpful in opening the heart? Um, even though sometimes maybe your mind is very tired uh, and have a lot of questions and doubts about, okay, what's next, what's next? How do you um, tame the mind to connect with the heart? That's one part of the question. Another thing is uh, my grandma. Uh, the, I, I, I'm, I've been thinking of my grandma recently. She's been quite old, um, in her 90s, not able to walk. How can I practice for her besides just dedicating merits to her after every sit? Because when I try to um, talk to her, she doesn't seem very interested in wanting to do chanting. Although she used to pray to the Buddha, to popi popi, meaning she prayed to the Buddha to say, ah, protect me, take care of me. But now when she's tired in her body, she doesn't seem to have the energy or, or in fact, she's more inclined to just watch TV. So how may I practice for my grandma? Yeah, these are some questions that come up. Okay, so Thank two you. parts. Yeah. Okay. Can you get that window? Yeah. And just close it up. Yeah. And maybe one or two of those. Thank you. It's just, it's a bit cold. I'm closing up the windows. Um, it was, uh, what was it this morning? It was six degrees. It was three, yeah. three, three degrees this morning. morning. Crazy. But that's Canada. So, so uh, Meta, first of all, if you've, come, if you've come from work and your mind is busy, don't try to get rid of the thinking because that will not be Meta. That will be aversion. So you have to be very, very patient with the thinking mind. Huh? And, and, and basically, I, I, I don't do Meta as prayer. Uh, I do metta as, as, as visceral feeling, heartfelt feeling. So I don't think metta thoughts and send it out to all beings. I rather did it like I did this meditation and, and, and let it be the abiding in, in the center of the chest. And I think the rest will take care of itself. So that's different than thinking metta thoughts. So if you wanted to try that, that would be a very direct way of not going to thinking. You'd be going to the body, you'd be going to the heart chakra. You'd be very patient because the mind's momentum uh, after work has been conditioned to think a lot. That's natural. But you can notice the thinking and say, well, so what, what does the heart feel like? So then the metta becomes a heartfelt body meditation rather than a, um, a conceptual emitting of, of, of energy or whatever, right? So that might be helpful way, way to approach that. Heart felt, body felt, uh, away from thinking. Uh, and then very, very patient with the thinking. Okay. Now your mom. Pick good TV. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean... Don't give her, um, I don't know, I don't know TV, but give her Downtown Abbey, is that what you were talking about today? Give her something that will make her happy. Give her beauty, uh, uh, flowers, or, or don't worry about uh, concepts or praying to the Buddha. So your first thing is to tune into where she's at rather than conceptually figure out what I have to do for her to be a good Buddhist before she dies. You don't want to go there because that's, that's just an opinion. But you as a granddaughter know her from the heart as well. So get to that space first. So commune with her. Listen to her. Where are you at? And then from, from her headspace where she's at, if her mind is moving to anxious thinking, then see if you can just bring up another topic like, you remember the time we did this? Or you remember the time? That was really lovely what you did. Or even like that beautiful dress you wore or that lovely dinner. You know, really worldly things. 
really worldly things, that's fine. And, and so you're taking her to a more happy place. But you have to tune into her first to know what her mind is doing. And each time that's going to be different. And then, then it's not like you're making merit for her. She's making merit for herself because she's taking her mind away from negativity into something wholesome and uplifting. So the best thing is gratitude, you know, that, that you, can, you can bring her mind back to the good things she's done for you, for the family, whatever. And, and the, the bad things don't worry about, right? Just go to the good things. Go to the wholesome things as much as you can. And that you have to just keep tuning into where she at. And lots of times you don't have to do anything. You just have to listen. Old people just want to talk, right? And then you have to be very patient. And, 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 and if you stay with the heart, then it's okay. But if you're with the head and you're thinking, oh, I got all those emails to answer too, you know, I, can't, I don't know if I can be here right now, then you lose, your, you lose the contact with her. And that's very real because you've got all kinds of other things to do. So the more you get into the heart space in your own meditation, the more you're going to bring that to your relationship to her. And then it'll take care of itself. It, it'll just arise naturally because there is spontaneity from the heart. Whereas with thought and the ideas of what we should be and what she should be and how, you know that, that's not, that's just an addict. That's just an, an opinion, isn't it? But your, your, you know, your heart-centered relationship to her is not an opinion. So the more you can do that in meditation, the more you'll do that with her. Huh? And, and then like with my mother, I, 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 I often talk about it. I, I, I created a garden on, on, on the veranda. I'm not a gardener, I'm not supposed to garden, but my brother got the potted plants and made this fabulous garden. And, and she went out there maybe 20 minutes a day, but she was really happy for days because she had some sense input. And this is interesting because we talk about, you know, the letting go of sensuality, but actually the senses are, 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 can be very beautiful too. And, and beauty, it does not necessarily uh, involve tanha. It can involve mudita, uplift, right? So think about what, what does she find beautiful? And, and what could you, what video could you rent <laughs> to, to, to bring forth? Like, like with my mother, uh, I didn't have money. I was a monk. I was living with her. So I went to the local library and got a library card. And then I saw, oh, they have CDs or, or whatever they had. Anyway, something that I could. Oh, yeah. Then I got my brother to go to CD recorder and, or DVDs. That's what called DVDs, right? Um, got, he got a recorder. And then I would search through. And, oh, and she, she grew up in, in the 20s in Latvia where there was a lot of um, uh, nouveau, uh, art nouveau architecture. And, and so I found Poirot. <laughs> this great Belgian detective. And so I'd bring her Poirot videos and it made her really happy because she could see the fashion and, and, and the beautiful shoes and things. I mean, I'm a monk. What am I doing here? But what it did, it uplifted her heart because her whole, her whole sense experience was so negative. It was arthritic pain. Uh, um, she was uh, legally almost blind. She could barely see Poirot. Um, she was, her hearing was bad. She had a lot of pain. So the whole sense experience was very, very negative. So, so I figured, okay, how could I bring, you know, some other, other aspects? You can be very creative in that way. But it's not like Buddhist hard line, you know, let go. It's not self. You know, you'll have a good rebirth. <laughs> it's, it's much more interesting than that. You see what I mean? And then it's actually quite fun. Because you're, you're with her rather than with a Buddhist idea. Okay. All right. Good luck. <laughs>